Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. I'm Minister Cedric Harden and I'll be sharing Lesson 5 for April the 2nd, 2023. We begin a new unit today, Unit 2, entitled Experiencing the Resurrection. Our topic for today, taken from the Adult Quarterly, is Amazing Encounters. Our devotional reading is taken from Psalm 22 verses 20 through 31. Our background scripture is taken from the Gospel according to Luke chapter 24 uh, verses 1 through 12 and we will be studying today. Uh, our print passage is taken from Luke chapter 24 uh, verses 1 through 12. Our key verse reads, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. As taken from the Gospel according to Luke chapter 24 verse 5b through 6a and that's from the NIV translation. Our lesson aims today number one is to compare and contrast the various reactions that persons had to hearing of Jesus resurrection. Secondly to confess areas of your life where you look for Jesus and do not find him. Thirdly, to identify one aspect of congregational life that most embodies the significance of the resurrection. We have two outlines that will be a part of our lesson text today. Uh, the first outline is entitled, Searching the Wrong Place. And then our second outline is entitled, Failing to Believe. And as always, we certainly thank and praise God for yet another day, another opportunity to be able to share uh, God's Word with you. We thank God for our Sunday School uh, lessons. Uh, they allow us opportunity to take some time to uh, just unpack what the Word of God is saying to us. So we encourage you now to get your Bible and uh, we're going to share some scripture and some notes with you that we want you to be able to understand uh, our lesson today. We want you to be encouraged today as we embark upon yet another season where we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, we are also coming to the uh, close, if you will, of the Lenten season. So we want to be mindful of that and the sacrifice and the fasting and the praying, uh, whatever the Lord have placed upon your heart to do in this season, that you find yourself uh, all the more seeking out uh, the Savior, seeking out the truth, seeking uh, to be able to understand uh, as we see the day drawing nigh. So I want to begin with you today with a little biblical context for this lesson. Uh, although the Gospels refer to different times of arrival and women who arrived at the tomb, Christ's resurrection is an infallible reality. Each writer reported from a particular place and in their unique style and perspective. The narrative may va vary, but the uh, order of events and how they occurred is precisely the same. Uh, each writer tells us that number one he died and he was buried second several women came early in the morning third they found the stone rolled away and the empty tomb fourth they were addressed by an angel fifth the women fled the tomb and sixth the disciples were not prepared for his death and were confused regarding the announcement of his resurrection. And so all of these central things we find in the Gospels uh, 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 as they recount uh, the activity regarding Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. So we want to be able to see all of the Gospels in that particular uh, light. We want to be able to reflect on all of them. Uh, not to uh, find loopholes, but to see how each writer uniquely uh, presented the narrative of uh, Jesus' uh, uh, life and certainly his death, burial, and resurrection. And we want to be able to uh, appreciate how the Spirit of God used uh, these men to write. 
So we want to begin um, with our first outline and I should tell you as we begin today I, I want to spend some significant time uh, as we talk about this lesson um, uh, addressing unbelief. Uh, I say that because the narrative will never change, has not changed. Right? We keep going through the same repetition of telling the same story. Uh, uh, and so each gospel writer presents, as we said, the central facts of uh, uh, surrounding Jesus' life. Uh, but the only uh, outstanding question, if you will, or issue that we really have to hone in on as disciples, and I, and I want to underline that because the struggle uh, that we'll see in this lesson is going on not from among people who are on the outside of Jesus' circle, but the struggle is taking place on the inside or in his circle or, or, or with and in the disciples themselves. And we want to be able to lift that today because we all have sinned, if you will, and come short of the glory of God. And, and, and I want to apply that passage of scripture in the context of unbelief. We have all fallen short of not appreciating the truth for whatever reason and we'll 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 share some scripture with you uh to help understand uh, uh your faith if you will uh i've said for years it's it, it's it's good and it's necessary that we have that we have faith but it's equally important that we keep the faith and we want to remember that as we go forward. So we don't want to wallow in unbelief, but we want to take hold of the truth of the gospel and embrace it. And, and even though we might struggle, uh, uh, it's not uncommon for us to fight the good fight of faith. Right? That's not uncommon. That is not out of the question because we do have to not have faith but we have to literally fight, struggle, spiritually apply uh, 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 due diligence to believing what the Word of God says so we can be the recipients of everything that is included for us as disciples. So let's begin Luke chapter 24 verses 1 through 9. I want to read this from the NIV translation. The Bible says on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. Verse 2, they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. Verse 4, while, uh, while they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. Verse 5, in their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? Verse 6, He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. Verse 7, The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners be crucified and on the third day be raised again verse 8 then they remembered his words and then verse 9 says and then uh, when they came back from the tomb they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others so we want to talk about uh, 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 this is a very uh, uh, unique uh, a topic here searching the wrong place so we 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 know from the account uh, as we look at these nine verses that uh, the 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 truth had been told by Jesus himself to his disciples right told to his circle told to the believers but the crucifixion and all of the the pain and the anguish and all that transpired surrounding Jesus' death, uh, 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 his crucifixion and subsequent death and then burial, uh, that uh, uh, they had somehow forgotten what the Lord said to them in the midst of this crisis. 
And I, I think it's important for us to understand that, you know, we, we have different reactions uh, to the Word of God depending on the trials that we are in. What do I mean by that? Sometimes the, the, the trials get hot, if you will. Sometimes the matter gets overwhelming uh, uh, for us spiritually and physically and mentally and emotionally. And many times we forget what the Lord said about himself and about even our own circumstances. Uh, uh, and so uh, what we have here is, is uh, uh, women going to a place where they should not have gone, right? They, they went to a tomb that they uh, uh, should not have gone to. They, they went to a place uh, 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 that was not designed for them to go. Uh, and this place where they went, and I, I want us to understand this clear, clearly from uh, the believer's perspective and the perspective of unbelief. So, so they went to the, to the tomb, number one, because they forgot. They forgot about what the Lord Jesus said would happen to him as a result of coming into this world. They went to the place of the dead because they, 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 they failed to believe the message uh, 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 that Jesus gave them concerning his life. Uh, uh, so they went to the place based on emotions and not based on faith. They went to the tomb based on a priority to uh, 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 to go through this this process of bringing spices and all of this. Look at the preparations that they uh, uh, had put together just to be able to go to the tomb uh, uh, to prepare the body of Jesus. All of this is going on in their spirit that this is where they need to go, but it's all wrong. All of it is wrong. They don't need spices. They don't need to be at the tomb. They don't need to be trying to find the deceased body of Jesus Christ. Everything is wrong. And there are reasons why. And the angels is talking to them. They ask them a very central question. And, and it's one that we have to ask ourselves. Why do we act in unbelief? Why do we do that? What is it about the trial that causes us to forget the word of God? Let me, let me say something to you about this crucifixion, this death, and this resurrection. This is a promise. Jesus, even through a negative situation or a bad situation or a grief-stricken situation, uh, 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 shared all of this information with his disciples, but it's wrapped in a promise. I said this was going to happen. It's not going to be good. I said this is how it's going to happen. I said this is where I want you to be. I said on the third day that I'm going to be raised. I, I'm saying these things. These are my promises of telling you the truth. So why are we in the wrong place? And it's easy. It's, it's, it's very easy to get out of kilter in your spirit in terms of unbelief. And this is a question that as the angels asked this question, the women were frightened, right? They bowed down with their faces. That's noble. But the men said, why are you here? But what, what we don't see in this text is a response. So we have to infer, we have to pull apart what makes believers not believe? What makes us fall into unbelief? These are open-ended questions where we have, to, we have to really, really think about why we are acting the way that we are. And what I mean by that, why are we acting in unbelief? And thank God for these angels who were on the scene to redirect. What would have happened if these women didn't see these angels, 
didn't have this encounter, didn't redirect them, would they still be looking? How long? Where would they have gone? You see? So we, we have to be careful because when we when we go when we sink down into unbelief, sometimes it's a challenge for us to uh, reestablish ourselves in the faith, right? Because things just don't seem to go right. It doesn't seem like Jesus is responding to us in a timely manner. I get it. It's a struggle even for me at times when I have prayed and asked the Lord about things. There's a delay. Sometimes it's it's weeks. Sometimes it's months. And yes, sometimes according to our time frame, it's years. But if God made you a promise, if God spoke a truth, and what the disciples failed to realize that the things that Jesus told them, uh, 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 even though it had not happened, this is the fulfillment. There will be a fulfillment as to what he said, right? The angels declare that in verse 6. They say he is not here. He has risen. He says, they say, remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be delivered, must be delivered over to the hands of sinners and be crucified and on the third day be raised again. So there's no way out of this crucifixion and there's also no way out of him being resurrected. So a lot's going on here. So this is two verses here that connect why these women were searching in the wrong place. Let me read something to you about Christianity and this in a, in a broader context of us understanding our faith. But Christianity rests on the certainty of Jesus' resurrection as an occurrence in history. The Gospels have it as their goal with the empty tomb and resurrection appearances. And the book of Acts insists on it. I want you to look at Acts chapter 1 verse 3. Acts chapter 2 verse 24 through 35. Acts chapter 3 verse 15. Acts chapter 4 verse 10. Acts chapter 5 verse 30 through 32. Acts chapter 13 verses 33 through 37. Right? So Paul regarded the apostle Paul regarded the resurrection as indisputable proof that the message about Jesus as judge and savior is true. I also want you to look at Acts chapter 17 uh, verses verse 31 and then 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 1 through 11 and verse 20. All of these scriptures that I'm giving you, and we have the Gospels, right, to add to that list. We have all of this scripture, uh, uh, scriptural evidence of this account. But that's not the problem. We have all of the evidence. But I heard Isaiah say, Isaiah 53, verse 1, he said, Whose report will you believe? That is the only matter for us to settle. So we want to remember and ask ourselves these questions. I want to give you some more scripture as we go along. What causes us to go to the wrong place? And then why can't we make spiritual progress? This, uh, and, and, and I'm not picking on these women because I've had these experiences. You have had these experiences. We have not always been strong or on top of the world, if you will. Uh, we've had some low points in our lives where we just, the gospel didn't resonate with us as we were going through our difficult times. 
right so I want to encourage you today as we look at this account and I know that we have trials and issues in our lives but we still have to fight the good fight of faith it is a struggle right even to believe because the enemy is blocking and fighting us when it's time to pray and read the word of God uh, the enemy he comes to steal what we have been given to learn if you have some time I want you to look at the book of Matthew the gospel according to Matthew chapter 13 and you'll see some activity over there uh, uh, as to why uh, we have issues sometimes believing the Word of God but this is a beautiful illustration to help us to understand uh, these women uh, their devotion to him did not end uh, 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 because they believed he was physically dead right they still believed they still had devotion they still had a mind uh, uh, to seek Jesus out but but it's misguided right so we 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 see here uh, 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 that that their subsequent declaration uh, in terms of these angels is the central pillar, as we read, uh, of the Christian faith. He is not here. It was an unmistakable reference to Jesus' resurrection, uh, without which our faith is in vain. Right, so there is no way out of believing in the resurrection if you are a child of God. There's no way around it. And if you uh, are not saved and you're seeking to uh, 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 to be saved, then you have to believe this story. However far-fetched that the world might say that it is, however far-fetched that the world might say uh, that Jesus' birth is. This, this is another activity in Jesus' life. Uh, where we discount or we have heard it said that, that that that's impossible. So the birth of Christ is an issue for the world and the resurrection is an issue for the world. But we have to believe these things because they have come from God the Father. They have come through testimony. They have come through the uh, uh, the prophets and through the gospels. And so uh, it's it's been authenticated biblically that these facts are on point the only issue as I said earlier what do you believe so then after these angels uh, encountered these women they uh, uh, they remembered and believed his words right they would not have gone to the tomb expecting a lifeless body to anoint for permanent burial right but to their credit they remembered his words to them in verse 8 so it only took a review a uh, lesson to convict their hearts rekindle their faith and transform them from helpless mourners to enthusiastic messengers right see we, we're wallowing in grief these women were wallowing in grief and they should have been celebrating right they should have been and they did you know they should have been proclaiming like the angels were he's not here he's risen praise God the testimony is true praise God that what Jesus said is true thank God praise God that when these women went to find this body it wasn't there praise God right so when God tells us he's going to do something in our lives we can praise him now because there will be a fulfillment of every detail every even the smallest detail of everything that Christ has said to you uh, regarding your life, regarding your circumstances, regarding your healing, regarding your family. When you pray and God tells you he's going to do something, you need to accept it as fact. Even if the answer is no, if that door is shut, there is no way. If God shut that door, there is no way you can open it. We need to accept these truths, right? So these women, think of the task. Preparing spices, right? Going to the tomb, all of this exercise uh, 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 in futility, if you will, to find a body that's not there. 
And all they were going to do in that process was grieve. They were going to mourn. They were going to prepare the body of Jesus. Where is the praise? So I can share with you today, looking through uh, 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 my own discernment here, that these women were hopeless. It's there. They had no confident expectation in the words that Jesus spoke to them, right? So I want to give you, because this, this happened, the same issue of unbelief happened in the gospel according to John, right? Chapter 20, verses 24 through 29. I would also encourage you to read Hebrews um, chapter 5 verses 12 through 14 and also Hebrews chapter 6 verses 1 through 8. And these will help illustrate issues, other issues in, 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 in our scripture in the Bible here where people struggle, right? This is not new. People struggled with not making progress. They struggled in unbelief. And let me just say this to you from uh, the book of Hebrews perspective, chapters 5 and 6. It's dangerous. It is literally spiritually dangerous for us not to make spiritual progress. Right? But I want to read something to you before we get to our last outline. I want you to turn your Bibles with me to Hebrews chapter 4. We're still pulling the thread on unbelief and why. Why is there issues of unbelief? But Hebrews chapter 4, beginning at verse 1, the Bible says, Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us fear, lest any of you seem to have come short of it. Verse 2. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. Watch this. But the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. So what is the word of God telling us? When we hear the word of God, when the word of God is preached to us, right? And we are sitting there waiting on a preacher to move us. When it is our faith in what the preacher says, in what the Bible says, that we can move ourselves. So the word of God is declaring for us today that when we don't mix faith with the gospel, then the gospel cannot help us and we suffer the consequences of unbelief. I hope that makes sense. When we fail to mix faith, our faith, our belief system with the gospel that is preached to us, then the gospel will be ineffective in our lives. Subsequently, we cannot grow. And then we blame others or those who preach to us that it perhaps was not a good message. That's one side of the coin. But let me ask you this question. Did you believe when the gospel was preached to you? And is that the reason why the message was not good? So we have to consider these things. There's a two-prong effect going here. God is establishing and sending forth the gospel to be preached to a particular audience that he arranges. And then the people's obligation is to respond. It's why we extend an invitation after every message traditionally historically we open the doors of the church if you will 
that's an opportunity for individuals to respond to what they heard. Perhaps they, if they were believing when the message was preached and convicted by the Holy Spirit, then we give opportunity for them to come forward and say, yes, I believe the gospel. Yes, I accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Yes, I want to follow Jesus Christ. Yes, I want to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. This is why we do that, because it gives the individual hearers a, an opportunity to respond in faith. Right, So we have to bring the gospel or, or cause the gospel to come alive in our lives based on our faith. I hope this is making sense to you, church. I also want to give you 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24 through 27, and also 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 through 8. Let's go to our second outline, failing to believe. Again, from the NIV translation, this is Luke chapter 24, verses 10 through 12. The Bible says, verse 10, It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the, to the apostles. Look at verse 11. The apostles. But they did not believe the women, because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Verse 12, however, Peter, however, got up, ran to the tomb, bending over. He saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away wondering to himself what had happened. This systemic problem happening to the, to, to the apostles, right? The women, after being redirected and corrected, and rebuked, if you will, by the angels who asked them, what are you doing here? The angels encouraged them and redirected them to remember what Jesus told them. And so they, they do, praise God, and then they go and tell. And this is what, this is our obligation. We have to tell now. We have to disclose, we have to declare, we have to proclaim, we have to witness, we have to evangelize, we have to spread the good news that he is risen. And they do that in verse 10. And they tell the people who, who are in their circle who should believe this and embrace this because they are apostles special messengers of Jesus Christ representing him. Their title and task is to represent Christ, but they don't believe. How can they represent Christ? And look at the reason that the Bible tells us. Verse 11. They don't believe. This is willful. Right? This is not an accident. But they did not, they did not embrace, did not accept these women, did not accept the message. And here's the reason. It seems like nonsense to me. Isn't that something for an apostle to say? That's shameful. Right? What about their duty? and responsibility to proclaim they can't they have no message they have no testimony right they have willfully blocked the message with unbelief so this gives clarity to Hebrews chapter 4 verses 1 and 2 that I just read to you right this is a willful act it seemed like nonsense they had been told the apostles obviously had they had been told the story the narrative Jesus told them what had to happen just like these women they knew the apostles knew the whole story let me say this to you Jesus is counting on us not only to share the good news to others Jesus is counting on us to reproduce what we are 
You remember the Great Commission? Jesus is counting on us to make other disciples. How in the world can we make a disciple when we don't believe the message? You will not be effective sharing anything with anyone when you don't believe it yourself. There is no evidence. There is no fruit going to come from this. They will not look like apostles. We, we know what they're supposed to be, but they're not acting like it. There is no fruit. And the only one we have record of here in verse 12, Peter, right? He got up and ran to the tomb and then bending over, he saw the strips of linen. What, so he goes to the, he's in the wrong place too. He goes to verify the message. He doesn't believe it, but I'm going I'm to I'm settle my own curiosity. I want to go check myself. But he told you the same thing. He wouldn't be there. So why would you go there? Right? Unbelief is a serious problem. Not just in the world, but it's a serious problem in the church. It's a serious problem among believers right and, and and we shouldn't cover it up we need to expose it we need to pray about it and we need to encourage we need to embrace and we need to help others to understand why this is happening and not make this normal you know I gave you John chapter 20 you remember, you remember uh, doubting Thomas he said he wouldn't believe but if you go over there and you read John chapter 20 I believe verse 24 to 29 Jesus tells him you can't go on like that I'm gonna let you feel my hands and touch me and all of that he said but you you gotta believe you can't go on in unbelief as a child of God you can't you can't stay that way How are you going to straddle the fence being a believer and an unbeliever at the same time? So this is a fight. This is a struggle. So all of this time that Jesus has spent with his apostles, he's come to the end of his life being crucified. He's been resurrected. Subsequently, he's going to ascend back to where he came from. But look at the posture of his representatives, those that he has spent time with, teaching them, training them, showing them. They watch everything that he do, performing miracles in front of them. And this is where they are after the crucifixion. It's something to think about, right? The women left the tomb, gave the message to the eleven apostles, who refused. Right? It says here the tense of the phrase, they would not believe the women, suggests that the women repeatedly told the disciples, but their message was dismissed as pure nonsense and hysteria. Let me ask you a question. We are going to prepare to close. How many times have we heard the same story? We go to church sometime expecting to hear something new. Let me help you to understand. There is nothing new under the sun. The gospel is the same. God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. There may be a different application of the scripture, but the scripture never changes. In other words, the resurrection will never change it'll still be here when we're gone it'll still be preached when we're gone right and the repetition of these women if we if we embrace this this commentary that the women kept telling Jesus own apostles of their encounter they're testifying right this is a testimony from these women. Now they've been put on the right track. 
Now they're believing. Now they're going to the right place. Now they're going through the right through the right motions that the disciples should be going through. And they're starting with their own rank and file. And the rank and file is struggling. Right? A woman's testimony was considered unreliable according to Greco Roman culture, right? A woman's testimony was considered unreliable and could not be used to settle legal disputes, right? However, it is challenging to justify these men's cynical reaction after having witnessed his supernatural power to resurrect the dead, right? Regardless of the source of this incredible news. We have a culture issue today. I'm going to leave it there because I could go further. We start talking about gender. We start talking about who can say what. But the question remains. Do we believe right, the story? Do we believe this account? So as we seek to close now, we want to pray for, as the lesson would help us to understand, those of us of the body of Christ who are struggling in unbelief. I want to pray for you right now and lift up, right? Lift up a prayer for all of us as the days grow evil that we stay faithful and in the faith, right? Right? Even as we see the, 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 the day coming to a close or the, the hastening of our Lord, our Lord and Savior's return, we want to stay close to the gospel. Encourage your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. When you see them struggling in unbelief, pray for them, talk to them, encourage them, help them, even through scripture to understand that is not normal. Nor should we make it normal that a disciple picks and chooses what they will believe instead of believing the whole full account regarding our Lord and our Savior, our resurrected Savior, Jesus the Christ. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for just uncovering an issue God in our lives we have issues of unbelief we struggle even with the gospel that is preached to us sometimes we struggle even in the message of the gospel that we read God we are struggling and we are not making the progress as we should as believers even according to your own promises we're not bearing the fruit in many times, in many cases of our faith that we should, we are struggling. God, we pray that you would help us now in the name of Jesus. Prick our hearts, convict our minds, redirect the wrong directions, God. If we're going in the wrong direction and to the wrong places and even to the wrong people, redirect us and help us to believe in the name of Jesus. Help our unbelief right now in the name of Jesus. We rebuke the enemy that comes to steal the very word that you sent. That we should hear it and believe and be encouraged. That we might be blessed. That we might be strengthened in the inner man. And that we might even spread the gospel. Spread the testimony that you have given to us. God we pray. We pray in this Lenten season. We pray as we look at the resurrection, God, that we will see the hope that is founded in this resurrection. That we would not go to dead places. Things that don't bear any fruit. Things that are not designed to bear any fruit. But that we will seek you out and live fruitful lives in the light of the gospel. In the light of the truth. That you have given to every man. That if they should hear it. They should believe it. They can call upon you. And they can be saved. God we pray for each and every family today. We know the struggles are mounting. But we intend to stay the course. 
We intend to persevere and to endure as good soldiers of Jesus Christ. And we need your help. We thank you for this word today. We thank you for blessing our eyes to see it and our ears to hear it. And we pray that you would bless our hearts and minds to understand and to receive it and to live it out. In the name of Jesus. God, we call it done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Saints, just know that I love you today. I'm encouraged today to encourage you today. That when I look at the word of God, many times I see myself. And I ask God simply to have mercy upon me. And I pray that you would ask God to have mercy upon you. According to the depths of the riches of his loving kindness. So it's again until such time that the Lord will permit us to come together again. We say God bless you.